Hello, everybody, and welcome Facebook Live with Mel Raposo. Today is March 6, 2019. Gosh, it's already March. Unbelievable. Um, it was just, it was just January, and it, it's 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 already March, March 6th, a month and a half away from tax day. E. Ed, thank you for joining us. I need to. Tell me if the sound is okay today, Ed, if you can. And hey, Neil, hey, my old classmate, Neil Miyake, Clayton Cataluna. Thank you, guys. Can you guys let me know if the sound is okay today? I don't know what, what was wrong last week. Hey, Cindy, honey, thank you guys for coming on. Can someone just, if you can, if it if the sound is good, can you type in a one? Gladys Baisa, former council chair from Maui. Thank you for joining us, Gladys. I hope uh, hope you can chime in. I hope you can chime in today, uh, Gladys. I l love to hear your point of view on some of the topics we're going to be talking about. Um, hey, Manny. Manny Cabral. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We got a, a bunch of topics today. We're going to try to get as much in as we can um, today. I uh, just want to make sure we get everybody on board. Hoping the sound check is good. Uh, let's see here. Jeanette Chan, Joy Adric, and Carol Lopez and Karen. Awesome. Get a job. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I, I'm getting really getting to enjoy. I, I have a job. I still work at the resort. You guys all know I work at Timbers Resort. Hey, Carol. Good afternoon. Sunny. Aloha. Uh, I work at the resort, Timbers Resort at night, 10 to 6. I worked last night. I got to work tonight. So, um, uh, I took some the weekend off. I went to go visit my son or spend some time with my son on the on, on the mainland. So uh, I had to make up the days on my normal days off, which is Tuesday, Wednesday. So I'm here. I'm tired, but we're gonna go with this. Andrea Tupola is on. Oh, thank you, Andrea. Please chime in. We're gonna be talking about some issues. Andrea, governor candidate for 2020. Uh, so no, 20. 2018, 2022, the next governor's election, Andrea Tupola. Please chime in, Andrea. I'd love to hear uh, your, your points of view. Uh, Leong, Sindra, Brian, my brother Brian from the Big Island, and of course, Roy Tanaka. Thank you guys all. Uh, I'm just going to start off real quick. We had some uh, messages that came in within the last 15 minutes. Number one, what do I think about the new police chief? Uh, well, his name is... Todd Raybuck, Todd Raybuck, 27-year veteran, Las Vegas Metro. Uh, he was a captain there, so I, I I don't know the man. I don't know anything about him. I uh, I know that the the police commission did an extensive search, and uh, I think I I I know they did a great job. Uh, I know a lot of people asking why wasn't anybody from Kauai. Uh, considered or hired. The the bottom line is this: the way the pay structure is with with the with with the counties, the chief is capped based on a salary commission recommendation. The assistant chiefs make more money than the chief. The chief's job comes with a, a hell of a lot more obligation and responsibility. So for our seasoned veteran officers that qualify, um, they, they're not going to take the pay cut to become the chief of police. Uh, that that. Inversion has to be looked at, <clears throat> but uh, anyway, that, that is why I think a lot of the Kauai cops don't put in, um, and also for the requirements, the, the, the executive experience. we got a really young police force on Kauai right now. A lot of the old goats have retired, so the young ones are left, don't have the executive experience to qualify for the position. So, um, you know, I, we're hoping that this, this is a good choice. I plan to meet with him as soon as he gets here. I want to share my mana'o a little bit about what I know and hopefully some improvements that need to be made uh, at the Kauai Police Department. So, Zandra, Marlo, Susan, Sherry, and Rich Robinson. Hello, you guys. Thanks thanks for joining. So that's kind of it. Um, <clears throat> he'll be starting shortly, I, was, I think, in a couple of months. Him and his family are going to be moving back, uh, moving to Kauai from Las Vegas. So... Uh, we just got to wait and see. Uh, I think he's he's got a huge task ahead of him. We got a lot of vacancies that need to be filled, so uh, we're gonna wait and see. And hopefully he can uh, he can stand it, stand stand it, uh, or uh, make it happen. And we'll, we'll also see. Aloha, cousin Rick. Aloha, aloha. Second question: uh, Homeless population on Rice Street, um, big issue. 
big issue on uh <clears throat> it's been a problem for a long time one that i've tried to address while i was still on the council uh, how will a hard las vegas police get along with fluff <laughs> build fluff ball justice and seemingly soft prosecutions uh like i said he's he's up for a huge task and i don't know if he is completely aware of the criminal justice climate here on Kauai, but he's going to find out soon. Hey, Shane, thank you for joining us. Um, okay, homeless on Rice Street, a big problem. There's a compound, a community down by the old Lihui Mill that's been there forever. These guys are jumping on the roads at night when people are driving. Again, this was brought to the last administration's attention. No one did anything. The community has grown. Now they cut the trees. Everyone can see it. It's a big problem. Uh, we just got to wait and see what this administration does. My so solution, as you all know, during, during the campaign was to create safe zones. Create safe zones for the homeless people so we can get them in areas that they can be, uh, that they can have a safe area that they can sleep and stay warm and stay dry. I mean, uh, it, it is what it is. If we don't give them a, a place to go and be safe, how do you kick them out? You, you're just moving the problem from one location to the next. You are not dealing with the issue which, I mean, we can sit here and talk all about the issues. We can talk about affordable housing, the lack of housing, the, the, the high cost of housing, the lack of jobs. All of these things contribute to homelessness, drug addiction, mental illness. But the bottom line is we don't have a place for, for them to go to. Unlike Honolulu, where they have shelters, uh, they have IHS and all of these facilities where you can go in and get a, a, a good night's sleep and, and a warm meal and a shower. We don't have that. So how do we go in and kick people out of locations uh, if we don't have an opportunity uh, or give them an opportunity to go somewhere that's safe and dry and warm. So, you know, a lot of a lot of work to do. That, that brings us right in to the problem, which Terrence, <clears throat> thank you for joining us, and Patty and Monica. Terrence uh, messaged me about the homeless population on rice. And, and, that, and that's where they're all living right now. And we don't have the resources, uh, or I say the political will, you know, I talked about opening up the stadium parking lot at night so people, the homeless in vehicles can have a place to sleep in their vehicles and utilize the county facilities for showers. And no, that was, that was met with complete opposition by the last administration. I'm not sure where the current administration stands on that. But we cannot expect this problem to go away if we don't do anything about it. Which brings me up to the next question, which uh, Sherry Cummings brought up. What's up with the Ohana zoning money? You know, the governor bragged about the monies, the millions and millions and millions of dollars that were going to go to the county, to the counties to, to fight or fix the homeless problem. And hey, El Doy, Aloha, Paul Pancho, Rory, Erica, thank you guys for joining. And Andrea, feel free to, to chime in. Again, Andrea Tupola is on listing, uh, running for governor in the next election. But th that money's never made it to Kauai. In my last six months on a county council, I tried to, get, tried to get the governor's homeless czar, and I can't remember his name right now, and he refused to come to brief the council. He said he was too busy. We offered to pay his way. I finally sent a memo to the governor directly and said, I find it disrespectful that our state agency would not come and brief the Kauai County Council and the people of Kauai on what's available for our homeless population. Till today's never come. I'd fire him if I was the governor. Andrew, if you win, you fire him. Fire him immediately. They're not addressing the needs. But the promises, the campaign promises, seven, what, what, what was it? Uh, what, uh, it was a uh, hundred, I forget what the total amount was. Kauai was supposed to get five million. Honolulu, I think, got 17 million. I'm sure they got theirs. We never got ours. So we got issues with the state, and we're dealing with this without the assistance from the state. So sorry for venting. That's a touchy subject for me because we have not done our job as it relates to the homeless population. And then the governor and Mayor Caldwell on Oahu talking about how, how in the last two years under my administration, our administration, the homeless numbers have dropped. I stated back then on Facebook Live that that was a lie. Oh, no, that's the numbers. And what now we got, which is, which is one of the items I want to talk about, the uh the uh hang on here uh the homeless executive director the guy that took care of the, the 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 homeless count the point in time count which was done and and what did he find all of a sudden a the numbers went up there was an, an increase in homelessness 
And what? Due to, uh, what did he call it? Undermining behaviors within the organization. He resigned. He resigned. And I'm saying, hey, it's because his numbers didn't, is not what the governor and the mayor of City and County of Honolulu wanted to hear. Because they have been bragging to the people of Hawaii how they have lowered homeless numbers. When every one of us know, every single one of us know that that was not true. You don't need to be a, an expert to know that the homeless population on every island is growing. So for the governor to come out and the, and the mayor of Honolulu to come out and say, oh, uh, our numbers are decreasing thanks to our great work, uh, disingenuous, disingenuous. And outright untrue. So anyway, um, I asked Josh Green last week, and he said he's working with the new mayor on safe zones. No, t t You know, I'm so sick and tired of people saying, oh, I'm talking to so-and-so, we're working on a plan. This problem is years and years old. And, uh, you know, Josh Green ain't new. Yeah, he's a newly elected lieutenant governor, but he's not, he's not new to this. But they need to release the funds to the county so the counties can do what they do best and get these programs in place. So, oh, we're going to meet with the mayor and safe zones, really, kind of late for that, guys. This is years and years overdue. Aloha, Bitos and Randy and Anthony. Who else we got? Tino, Suz, Maderis, Kimo Rosen, Terrence, GNC, Live Well, Lihui. Wow, GNC is on, on board. Ilona. And Damien, Damien Ferdusco. Sherry, safe zones for real in Lihui. We had a meeting with the mayor. He said two other proposed projects besides ours were under consideration, but they want to focus on the build of Lihui. You know, that, that's another frustration for me. We got some real serious needs on this island. Housing, homelessness, affordable housing, all, all of this. And, you know, everything is focused on Rice Street. Everything is focused on the redevelopment of Rice Street because we got the Tiger Grant, which I did not support. Because Rice Street is not a priority right now. We've got too many other priorities with traffic and everything else. Basic needs that we are being deprived of because we're focusing on these pie-in-the-sky programs. So I respect their position. Um, yes, Sherry, you guys got the best project that I've seen. We got a couple of guys in Kapa'a and <clears throat> the North Shore working on projects that all we need is the mayor's approval. Worked on this with Bernard's time, and, and Bernard refused to sign a declaration that it was an emergency so we could get some exemptions from the code so we could get these homes built ASAP. Why they don't do it, I don't know. So we keep saying, yeah, we're meeting with your mayor, or we're meeting with the community. You know what? We get elected. We elect our officials to make the decisions. To make the decisions. Anyway, you guys getting me all fired up. Rice Street can never be renewed. Thank you very much, honey Charles. Thank you very much. And and but no, we're 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 gonna forget about everything else right now. And we're gonna focus on Rice Street. And you can you can assume, make your own assumptions of why that is happening. I'm not gonna go there. Uh yeah, Sherry, I understand. And I think you know, we gotta work with you. Uh, applying some pressure on our administration to allow you guys to move forward and assist where we can. Hey, Jennifer, LB. Uh, all right. Why we aren't being heard. Yeah, I know. I hear that all the time. That's why I do Facebook Live. We try to get as many people involved. We try to get as many people engaged as we can. Uh, Anahola Kekaha, we got Hawaiian homelands. We got ADC lands. We got a lot of state lands. Andrea, we need the state lands to be uh, so we can put some housing on there, emergency housing. Uh, and that's what we got to do. We got to get a change of direction at the state level. Um, I like Andrea Tupola. I I, I, she's on here. I, and I'm not saying it's because she's listen to her, talk to her, and find out. She's, she's smart and bold. Anyway, Dave, aloha. So um, as far as the homelessness on Rice Street, Terrence, I, I feel your pain, man. I feel your pain. You got to keep calling the cops. Keep calling the cops. Keep calling the cops. I hate to put the cops, but but that, what else you got to do? Uh, you know, you, you you what else are you going to do to protect yourself, protect your clients, protect your, your customers? Um, that should be your priority, right? You got to take care of yourself and your customers, your property. Um, so when it's being threatened, then you got to call the cops. You got to call the cops and keep a log. 
of every time you call the cops and what the outcome was. We got a new chief coming. He's, we're going to put him through the test to see if he can make things change and start focusing on the issues that affect us local people that live here. Dexter. Kerry, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. I'm going to go back to my list over here. Um, also, a lot of complaints about the DMV delays. Now, I'm just going to say this real quick. While I applaud the administration for having a pool number system, I don't care if you had a pool number system or chairs. If you're not changing, creating the efficiencies in the it, at the counter, that that just that what that that just it's a it's a pacifier. It's a pacifier. Oh, I got my number, and it takes a, I saw two and a half hours to get a license plate from uh, John uh, Mahi. Now. What I'm seeing is a lot of people responding to the complaint saying, hey, go to Safeway to go get your registration. Answer me this. Why in the hell would you have to go to Safeway to, get a, to use a kiosk that should be at the county building? Why aren't we putting the kiosks at the county building? Why are we? I understand the private-public partnership, but we are benefiting Safeway because, you know, most people are going to go there forget the registration, going to run in the store and buy some stuff. Those kiosks should be at the county building. So our residents can get their registrations done at one place where it should be, in a county building, not in a private enterprise. Now, I appreciate Safeway, Safeway's offer, but they're getting, they're getting compensated for that. They're making money off of that. Those kiosks should be at the county building, at the PE Koi building, and we should waive the transaction fees. Why are we punishing the public from using a kiosk and saving the county money and saving the county time, but no, we're going to punish you by adding a, a service charge. I understand the banks charge a service charge. But if we want to speed up the lines as a county, if we want to improve our customer service, it comes with a price. It comes with a price. So if you make your way to the county building and go to a kiosk, why should you be charged a penalty? I can understand if you're going to do it from the comfort of your own home, you're going to do it from your computer. Then I can see, you know what, you got to pay that percentage, whatever it is. Uh, I just don't understand why we do things the way we do and we expect things to change. It's not going to change. Go to Safeway? Why? I'm, I'm buying a county registration. I should be able to get it at a county facility on a county uh, kiosk. It just baffles me, baffles me. And we're proud of that. We take pictures of it. Say, look what we did. What did you do? You put in more cars on the road to get to Safeway to go do the registration. Mel, I talk story with at least five different homeless people, and none of them are from here. None of them have any mental disorders. One has a job. They all tried, uh, all tired of being called homeless, so they have, uh, you know, Marlo, that's the big debate right now. I see the big Facebook debate. Oh, no, these people aren't, they, people not sending them here. Uh, here they are. I Listen, I talk to the homeless people. I talk to every single one of those homeless people in front of the county building. They're, they are being sent here from other jurisdictions. Like we have a program that we send people back to where they come from. Other states have the same thing. So I know there's some debate that, no, it's not. It is happening. It is happening right now. And one of the, my brother Brian on the Big Island brought up a really good point about the Southwest now, fair wars. We, we, that's another topic we want to talk about. All the fares now, $49 to Oakland and $49 back. They're going to have a whole new wave of people that are tired of the cold weather coming to Kauai, thinking that they can make it over here, <clears throat> thinking that they will be able to come here, get a job, get a house, and they're going to end up in the park like everyone else. So there's pros and cons, and we got to address that. We need to address that. Uh, put one on my house so I can sell soda and hot dogs. I tell you, I mean, isn't that the truth? We're going to put a kiosk in a private business, and that private business it's going to make money. And, and yet we're going to charge the taxpayer a surcharge or a service fee for doing that. Come on. Come on. No, it's not. We have mercantile rights as beneficiaries. We're able and willing to do this to address the homeless issue. 
I'm with you, Sherry. Let's go get it done. Let's just go get it done. No more parking at the county building. More parking stalls. Yeah. You know, um, one of my my years back, I I, I proposed to the to the mayor, Bernard, that we should have a motor pool. Like the military has a motor pool. In other words, not everybody needs a car every day. We have more cars than employees in this county. So they came up and they came up with this brilliant idea that we're going to go hybrid model. So we're going to go some motor pool, some not. Every car is in a motor pool. and you got. But we still have more cars than we need. He, he missed the whole point. The bigger problem is they moved all the motor pool parking where the public parking should be. I, sometimes I wonder who makes the decisions, how, where, is it in a bar? Are they making these decisions in a bar with some alcoholic beverages? Because why would you take away the public parking and put all the county vehicles there, which we have too many anyway? So, yeah, right in. Um, I agree. You know, it, it, that's a frustration for me. Now, outside looking in, um, you know, never could get the administration of the, uh, the past administration to, to, to move on many of my ideas. And now, it, I'm sure it ain't going to happen now. So... We just got to, you know, it's, again, we just got to use this as a platform. I know there's a lot of people that listen to this. Um, a lot of people watch it after the live. Um, and I know the word gets back to where it needs to go. So, yeah, it makes no sense. That employee parking or the employee, all those vehicles that aren't being used should be far. And the employ and the, and the, and the, uh, the residents, the, 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 the taxpayers, the public, I should say, because visitors as well should be able to access the county building and walk in a mile. So anyway, Andrew, mahalo, mahalo. Yeah, they've been given one-way tickets. We know that. I mean, you know, I, I tell you, when people post on Facebook, um, I wish they would check their facts, you know. All of the people that post on Facebook about uh, the homelessness, and yes, mental illness is a big part of it. And we have a failed state mental health uh, division. A failure, complete failure, not enough beds. How the hell, how the hell we can have the audacity to turn a person in need of mental health services away? We don't do that for dogs. We don't do that for cats. We don't even do that for damn rabbits. I love animals, but I love people more. So I don't get it. We, we, we talk about $10 billion for a rail project that's, uh, that's failing. We talk about raising all these taxes now for DOE. What are we doing for our mental health community, our veterans? 20 veterans a day kill themselves. We got a ton of veterans on this island, over 5,000 veterans that are struggling. What are we doing for them? State, talking to the state. No disrespect, but it took me to relocate to Oregon to realize how bad Hawaii is. The public officials can learn so much from the Yeah, you know, see, I was blessed. 14 years on a council, I traveled all over this country, met with jurisdictions all over this country, met with leaders, mayors, council chairs, senators. And I tell you, we have a lot to learn. We choose not to because the pride and the ego, too big over here, too big. Look what we're messing around with at the state legislature. What are we messing around with? Rubbish. And, and all the tough issues <coughs> not happening. Thank you, Suzette. I agree. Uh, my kids are finding that out in Oregon. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's the same structure. Different people, different priorities, personal gain, com uh, connections with the lobbyists, corporate America taking over. Is the fact that the people are being sent here by outside funds? Uh, yes, we that is true. Southwest is a double-edged sword. Absolutely, Kimo. It's going to help with competition. It's going to help our families get to visit families in our island and as well as to the mainland. But, you know, as the rate's coming out, $300, $400. Alaska, America, they've been charging that already, way before uh, Southwest made their announcement. So I said this last week, right? Hold off. Don't buy your Hawaiian Air tickets because Hawaiian came down. I said, don't buy your tickets. Wait for Southwest. Sure enough, 
The erosion caused by humans along the Napali coast, Waimea Canyon is, and other places on our island, ruining our most important asset. We need a plan to save absolutely rich Richard Robinson. You know, since the floods, the reefs, the trails, the valleys, the trees, the mountain, Nepali, is healing. The local residents out there are happy. Yeah, they're inconvenienced with the, with the convoys and you got to schedule your times back and forth. But it's a heck of a lot better than what it was. Well, you couldn't even go down to Kea Beach and enjoy the beach. It was just littered with tourists. Just, you couldn't park. The trails were destroyed. So absolutely, Richard, yeah, we got to talk about that. Maybe we got to do something and save Nepali, save the North Shore, uh, the, the resources. Um, the fishermen are happy. The limo all came back. The Opihi is back. The fish are back. Uh, I don't even, you know, we the state better put a limit on the number of visitors that go down there once that road opens. We shall see. Hey, Roger Karras, thank you for your service and your retirement from the Civil Air Patrol. Roger, you took, you remember, I don't know if you remember this, but you took me up on my first airplane ride. Let me fly the plane and got me hooked, buddy. Thank you so much, Roger, and thanks for joining. Sorry, Mel, the last comment was actually respond to the post back at me. Okay, no worries. These things flying around. Hey, Larry, Aruda, and Shen. There's Andrea parking. Hey, Larry, Andrea is on. Andrea, parking, it's the same at the Capitol. It's like they purposely don't want parking for the public. You know, Andrea, I, I think you're right. I think they want to discourage the face-to-face -face with the public. Because why else? Why, why else? We talk about healthy communities. We talk about, well, your employees should walk, right? Your employees should walk. And anyway, Andrea, it is. I think that's what it is. They just you drive around, drive around. Yeah, you know what? Never mind. Because that's what we do, yeah? Local people. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to. I ain't going to walk that far. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to drive around looking for parking. I'll just come back later. And then eventually, you just let it go. That makes, actually, that makes sense, Andrea. It's scary. You don't know what you're doing until you're dealing with it. My heart goes out to these people, but what do you do when they're standing in your doorway talking to themselves? What do we do? You know, in that, that's what I'm talking about, Carol. The mental health system has failed. You know, back almost 30 years ago now, um, I was on the police force. We came across an individual like that. The police officers had the ability to sign uh, an involuntary commitment paper to, and we go right to Mylona, they had to hold them for 72 hours. And I understand constitutionally it was challenged and, and, and it, it was found that the cops didn't have or shouldn't have that authority. And I kind of agree with that. But what's happening today, and I got this straight from the mental health professionals on Kauai probably six to eight months ago when Joanne Yukimura and I met with them to find out what the heck can we do to help. They don't have beds. They don't have bed space. So you know how you normally, right, if you have a person that, that uh, has possible mental issues that you would err in the side of safety? That's how it used to be. Not anymore. They find every reason to figure or determine that this person is safe and harmless, and they let them go. And they let them go. And then bad things happen. I don't understand when we're talking about all these other big issues at the state level, we're not talking about mental health. Many of our families are, 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 are suffer from mental illness. I already talked about the veterans. Arnell, Jeff, Sherry Lopez. Yes, Sherry, aloha. Jana, eh, Pono, Kaleo. Okay, let's see. Oh, I love it. We're getting a lot of questions. It is a state mental health failure. I retired from the choir community, and you did your job well, honey. I remember you were great. You were great. And thank you for your service. 27 years, honey. Awesome. No worry. They eventually raised taxes to help there, too. You know, I, I mean, I, we're, we're beginning to see the trend. We're beginning to see the trend. Tax and spend. Tax and spend. When we run into a problem, you know what? Let's just tax the people, and we'll throw more money at it. And at least we can tell the people that we're working on it. Rather than looking at the inefficiencies and the problems and fixing it, no, we're just going to tax you. Another half a percent going up, GET. When is this going to stop? 
See, the state forced, basically took our TAT away so they could give the states, I mean, the counties uh, authority to raise the GET, which we did. Kauai did. I didn't support it. I was the only one that didn't support it. But it went up half a percent because now the state only has to raise it half a percent. So it doesn't look as bad as if the, then the state raised it a percent. You know, it's, it's, it's just a political chess game, and I'm sick of it. And we gotta, we got to make sure at the next election we do what is right and we vote. These people that supports all these tax increases, get them out. Get them out. They cut mental health services during the recession in 2009. They decreased hours for patient to service provider hours and never reinstated it. And of course, it's now 2019 and levels and population have become worse but never reinstated. Absolutely, Andrea. Again, Andrea Tupola, thank you so much. Andrea is experienced. She's in a, she's in a uh, the state house. She was at the, uh, at the legislature and um, did a great job. And thank you for chiming in. Terry Lynn Martin, aloha. Kimo, Kauai County lost their best leading man, their most passionate public. Oh, I'm not going to read that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not going to read that. Appreciate that. I'm touched. I'm flattered. Tumua. Hey, Tumua, brand new papa. Daddy status. Congratulations, Tumua, on the new baby. Charlene, Jeannie, and Chris Tavares, thank you. Housing now. What on earth are we going to do about the housing crisis? Number one, the county, get out of the way. Let the developers come in. Give them the incentives and let them build. That's simple. We need land. We need land from the state. We need land from all these tons of ADC land that are near infrastructure. We need to get them and turn them over to affordable housing developers, 100% affordable projects. And I ain't talking about 140% median income. I'm talking 80% and below. We can only do that if we turn over the land to the developers. Provide with those low-income housing the developers qualify for tax credits and they can make a profit. They can actually do the job. We got to get out of the way and stop playing this political volleyball. Michelle, Richard, Michelle, another Michelle. Roger should run for council, a good man. Roger, yes, yes, he should. Yes, he should. And I think you too, Ed, I think you should run for council too. Hey, Michelle. Yes, there are homeless individuals that are taking their lives as recent as a few days ago, our generational uh, yeah, you know, um, Sherry, I, I tell you, Anahola gets hit bad. Um, I, and I don't want to go into the suicide deal. We did it. We, you know, we, it's it's a common thing now. And what what what's happening, and it's not just here, but it's more prevalent here, is that it happens so often that the people, uh, it, it it's kind of not as impacting. It's sad. That's sad. And our, and our state mental health, as Andrea stated, uh, the, the services keep getting decreased. Keep getting decreased. And our, and our, and our victim, you know, but it, homelessness isn't a crime. Mental illness isn't a crime. And we shouldn't be treating them as criminals. But the more and more we neglect them, the more and more we ignore them, <clears throat> the more and more that problem grows. What happens is the community starts to dislike them and blame them. And they don't see the mental illness as, 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 a, as an issue. They just see a bunch of homeless people that are talking to themselves. No one knows what these people have been through. Listen, there's some homeless people that are downright pilau. They're bad people. And they, they choose to live that way, and, and they don't care about other people. And I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the people that are down on their luck, the kupuna, the keiki, the, the, the ones that are just on tough times. They're suffering from mental illness, drug addiction. And we drive past them every single day. And do the press release saying, you know, yeah, we cut $17 million, $20 million. We're what? So what? Where's the money? Where's the services? Where's the services? Where, when someone comes in and needs help, see, the, these people are not going into mental health anymore because they know nothing happens. Throw them a bottle of pills. Hey, take this. It'll make you feel better. Maybe give them a shot. No, that's not solving the damn problem. It's not solving the problem. Hey, Brian, Rowena. Hello, Andrea. We need to run, turn our state. <laughs> Andrea, Ridge, Nuesca, Damien, 5150. Hey, James, Kevin, Charles, Hirata, Choi Wada. 
She said, what, you don't know her? And of course I know her, Michelle. I love you guys both. Thanks for joining. Sorry, I'm reading all the comments, all the comments, all the comments. Billy Kenoy. Hey, Michelle Jenkins, cousin, thank you for joining. Aloha, Mayor Billy. Gosh, you, look at that smile. Man, I love you, Billy. Thank you, thank you. Oh, man, that's you talk about a passionate, passionate guy with love for, for his island and, and the state. That's my man right there, Billy Kanoi. Known that guy for a long time. Billy, feel free to chime in. You know, we're going to be moving this platform to Zoom. <clears throat> we're going to do a test run tomorrow. And when we do the Zoom, we're going to have people going to be able to chime in and talk and not text. So we're going to try that tomorrow if you guys are around. Uh, 5.30, we'll do the same thing. I'm going to pop up a link that you're going to click on on Facebook. Click on it. It's going to take you to the Zoom platform, and we're going to have some fun. We're going to see if it works. I wish you won dig a bigger hole next time or the cowboy from Color Hill EMC. Not sure what you're talking about. Angela, Janice, Dara, what about the modular housing mail? Yeah, and we're talking about that. I think we, we all have ideas. We all have different plans. Again, without land, it doesn't matter what kind of house you have. Modular, container, modified containers. You, you, there's so many options now. It's all over the country, all over the world. The problem is the land and the infrastructure. It's not about the house. We that, that's the, we can do the modular homes. If you go past Anahola, the at the community, uh, I'm sorry, what, what I'm, I'm getting too excited now. The uh, Anahola, what is it called? Anyway, past the the big solar place on the left, they have a, a home that that that's it's prefab. Come up, bam, 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 put them together. We need a land. We need a state to get off their asses and give us land. Sorry for my French. Ah, oh. Shailane Weaver, Bethany, hey, aloha, 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 everybody. Sherry Don, Lokilani, Joseph Figueroa. Thank you guys for joining us. Gosh, you guys, I'm going down the comments. Sorry, guys. Um, how hard would it be to build one community? Wait. Vented with shared kitchen, locker rooms, and secure private showers and land surrounding. Again, again, it comes down to land. It comes down to, you know, $13 million for Rice Street improvements. $13 million. And then you add the $2 million county math, $15 million. You know what we could do with $15 million for housing? You know what we could do with $15 million leveraged against federal money? and tax credits with affordable housing developers and organizations. You know how much we could do with that? No, we opted to go and chase the dream of reinventing Rice Street. It's not a money issue. It's a priority issue. And, and this administration and the last administration, the priority isn't the housing. It's redevelopment of Rice Street. Like we need more on Rice Street. We need housing. We need housing. Robin Danner, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Triana, Terry Pia, your French is fine. Right on, Rory. Whoo, I got to watch. You know, my wife, she get upset when I say stuff like that. But, you know, it's a passionate subject for me. It's a passionate subject. And, uh, you know, there's so much more we can do if we put our minds to it. If we decide, let's tackle the housing problem. We got people out there like... Uh, Sherry Cummings and their group. They're, they're, we got people on the west side. We got people on the north shore. We got a lot of people that can make this happen. But the government's got to give them some help and get out of the way. That's how you fix the problem. Okay, I got to get back to my list here. Because we, we, we are, uh, okay, so we talk oh, marijuana legalization. I'm not going to spend too much time. I do want to mahalo Jimmy and D for uh, voting against it. <clears throat> um, we've spoken on that a lot. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on that, but, you know, you guys all know my position on that. It, it is what it is. I know a lot of people disagree. Um, you know, it's just that I come from the law enforcement background. I've witnessed it. I've, I've witnessed the, 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 the problems. Um, I've also spoken to many, many, many uh, um, recovering addicts as, as well as drug addicts. Uh, that There's no, no, no dispute in their mind that, that marijuana is a gateway drug. I don't want to spend too much time on that because there is uh, some issues. Um, oh, real audit again. Uh, tomorrow, Friday, Friday. If you go to my Facebook, and I might, I gotta go find and repost it. But Friday, 
is that the city and council of Honolulu will, city and county of Honolulu, the county council will be hearing resolution, um, Heidi Sunayoshi's resolution to move forward with the funding for a forensic audit of the real project. It was deferred last week because the powers, the, the powers are, they're getting worried, people. They're getting worried. And so Hart, right, the, the, the transit authority, Hart, said, no, 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 we, we don't want you to do an audit. Let's wait for the federal investigation to be done. Well, the federal investigation may take years. And people got to understand that the federal investigation and a forensic audit are two completely separate things. You know, we're looking, the, the audits are looking at, at um, policy. They're looking at uh, the procurement. Uh, this federal investigation, I think they're looking for criminal stuff. So, yeah, it's two different things. <clears throat> we got to send testimony. Go to the city and county website. Go to the county council website. Go to the calendar on the agenda. It's, uh, you got you to gotta submit your testimony. If you need help, shoot me a message. I'll, I'll send you over the link. And the, and the resolution number. Uh, we need for you to do that no later than tomorrow. They need all the testimonies in by Friday. Uh, please, I want to help Heidi out on that. I want them I want them to move forward on that forensic audit. You cannot tell me. Initial cost $5 billion, cost now $10 billion. You cannot tell me that there hasn't been some, uh, some issues, some problems. Hey, Michael Smith, Luke, Chris. So please, uh, again, if you need help, shoot me a message. Um, send it to my messenger. Don't put it in this chat because I miss a bunch on this. Uh, and I'll send you the link as well as the resolution number so you can submit your testimony. Or if you oppose it, you can do the same. I, I believe we should move forward with that forensic audit. Uh, again, a lot, of, a lot of pressure from the constituents on Oahu got the, the, the council chair uh, to, to put it back on the agenda on Friday. So good stuff. Hey, Leona. Love you, Leona. God bless you and your family. Hey, Raleem. Ray, Ray. Long time no see. Are we still cousins or what, man? I don't know. You don't answer my calls. You don't return my texts. Uh, okay, let's see what else we got over here. Oh, salary commission. County salary commission is meeting tomorrow. Guess why? They're looking at raising our salaries for our department heads again. Uh, I know Luke is on. Luke, you got to be careful when you guys get this um, resolution, you know. Let's make sure it's fair. Base it on performance, not just because. Because they work here a long time, they should get a raise. No, please base it on merit. Base it on performance. Base it on what's happening. I don't think we're doing a good job. When I look at the roads, when I look at the solid waste, when I look at the landfill, when I look at everything, I don't know if they deserve a raise. They just got one. So tomorrow morning, salary commission. And there's a deadline of the 15th. They got to get that over to the council. So they're going to push it through tomorrow. I cannot wait for next week's Facebook Live. Or maybe Thursday. Thursday's test on Zoom. Join us because I may have the, the resolution or at least a draft of what they're going to be proposing. Uh, all right. Another thing. This, this is another thing. I, just, I got a bunch of texts over the weekend while I was on the mainland from employees of the county they are stressing out because there is a proposal that will change the work schedules um, of our county employees to 10-hour days, four days a week. 10-hour days, four days a week. That is being proposed or uh, soon to be proposed. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. All I know is I got, a, I got text from a lot of moms, parents that have children, that are gonna be screwed if they mandate this new schedule. I don't know what the motivation is. I cannot figure it out. <clears throat> Cause I know when you, if you're gonna convert to four days, we're gonna, we're gonna reduce the work staff, the workforce. If everyone is working four days, obviously you gotta have the overlap unless you can shut the county down one day, which I don't think that would be foolish. But then again, it could be. But my point is this, even if, even if you open the county for five days and you're only running, uh, the employees only work in four days, you got, you're going to get overlap. You're going to have, the, the staff is going to be reduced or they're going to hire more people, which is the last thing we need to do right now. Why are they texting me? Good question, Rileen. Good question, Ray Ray. I don't know. Hey, Mariah, I don't know. 
So if anyone knows, if anyone out there in, in this, uh, on this Facebook Live right now has any idea what the motivation to go to a 410 work week, please post it so everyone can see. Uh, you know, I want to share. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to find out what's the, what's the, the cause or what's, what's, what's triggering this huge departure from how we have done things since the beginning of time. Uh, you know, police and fire and emergency personnel, that's one thing. You, you know, they work weird schedules. They got to get coverage and so forth. But when you're talking about our, our staffers that have families, um, the other thing now is when you take a vacation day, it's going to be 10 hours of vacation versus eight hours. So they're going to be losing more vacation to take a day off. So, hey, Abby and Sandy and Kanani and Lisa, thank you guys. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. If anybody knows, please help me out. Um, help me out. Um, four tens in their eyes will take cars off the road. Oh, my goodness. It's going to take more than, you know, flex schedule, flex schedule, voluntary flex schedule, right? If you can come in early and, you, and you're not needed, you're, you're not in front of the public, yeah, I said it in my campaign. Go to flex. Offer your employees voluntary flex times. So the the you know there's a lot of moms and dads they want to take care of their ch children in the morning, and they can come in at ten and work a little later, or come in early early and get off early early. But how can you mandate a four ten week? I don't know, and it's going to cause some some staffing issues, which I am worried about. Because I can, I foresee all of a sudden we need more employees to cover shifts. So what happened to the county auditor position? Good question. Good question. I did apply. I haven't heard a thing. The uh, posting, they had to repost the position. It closed on the 19th of February, um, which is what, two, three weeks ago now. I haven't heard a thing, so I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. Um, I understand that there's some strong opposition. Uh, from the administration to have me as their county auditor. I think that's quite hilarious if if you ask me. Um, you know, I got the background, got the experience, definitely got the passion. Um, the learning curve, the training curve would be very short. Um, I just think they're afraid. Honestly, I think they're afraid. So anyway, there's this huge force of opposition um, we just got to wait and see. We just got to wait and see what the council does. It's a council appointment, not an administrative appointment. This process goes through the council, not the administration. So we'll see. Um, it's, it is what it is. Because they know you can answer all the questions, so you should refer them to the appropriate staff. Uh, you know, I, I try. I, it's so much easier for me to just research the question, Ray Ray, um, and provide the answers to the, to the people. Because if I send them to the county, they're lucky if they get through. You know, it may take two or three or four days to get, get a response. A lot of these questions that are being asked, um, you know, I have the answers. It's, it's not because I'm a genius. It's because I've just been doing this for a very long time. So uh, you know where the bodies are buried as far as an auditor. Yeah, I think they're afraid that, <clears throat> you know, the, the knowledge that I've um, attained over the last 14 years uh, 12 years as a police, as you know, as an investigator, as a patrol officer, as a sergeant, another, you know, what, 96, you know, another 20, 20 years, 23 years as a private investigator. I honestly think they're just afraid that I might find something wrong. Well, again, the intent is not to go and find something wrong. Performance audits, regulatory or compliance audits are a tool, are a tool for the administration and the council to find recommendations to make uh, uh, projects or uh, programs more efficient. That's what it's for. Now, if you got stuff to hide, then that's not my problem. If you got stuff to hide, then pff, tough. But if you're running your operation above board and, and, and you got, you know, we, we, we're doing things uh, not in the most efficient way, I, as a mayor, as a governor, as a whatever, I would welcome the audits. I would welcome the audit to come in, work together as a team to make this county more efficient. That's that's the way I see it. But no, there's a definite fear. Uh, Mel, they see you as a conflict of interest since you know too many people on the personal level. 
Well, you know, the one thing about me is whether we're personal, we're friends, and you know this, everyone on this call on this Facebook Live knows this. There's a line between personal relationships, professional relationships. I got a lot of friends. I got a lot of friends. But, you know, I voted against my cousin's confirmation on a police commission years ago. I was the only one voted against. And it's not because, it's just I do what I believe is right. And, and it's a hard thing. It's not easy. But that's me. That's how I was raised. That's how I ran my political career. And that's how I would run it as an auditor. Audits to governments are like sunlight to a vampire. Yes. But again, if we turn the focus and use it as a, a tool, an efficiency tool, then it's it, it, it beneficial. Uh, but yet they, they, they think, Anyway, this year is a conflict. I already got that one. Administration should work with you regarding auditor position. You and Derek have always worked well, and you're both. Yeah, I agree, Richard. I mean, I you know I agree, um, but he doesn't see it that way. He does not see it that way. Uh, hey, Jenny, I hope you're back home. Kule, such a loss for Kawhi. You deserve the position. Yeah, I'm not here begging for for <clears throat> for for votes for the position. I'm just the question was asked. I answered it as honest as I can. Um, I know that you see Kawhi is small. We share friends. So what goes on across the street at the administration comes back to me. And it's disturbing when I hear that. It's disturbing when I hear people saying, you cannot let Mel get the auditor position. It, 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 it hurts me, really. But I can understand that and I can respect that. And this council will do what this council believes is right. And I will respect whatever choice they make. I have not, you know, I spoke to the council members in the, in the past, submitted them. I told them I was interested. And that was the extent of that. I haven't bothered them about it. They're going to go along amongst, I don't know how many people applied. They're going to go through interviews. They're going to pick the best person for the job. And I hope it's me. Is it true that the rail audit is on hold? No, it's not on hold. It's, it's going to be heard on Friday at the city and county uh, council meeting on Friday, eight, uh, I think it's 8, 830 or 9 o'clock in the morning. Hey, Faith, Charlay, thank you for joining. Andrew, Kahelani, Kolo, thank you very much. Um, Let's see. Always respected that about you. Yeah, thanks, Sherry. You know that. I mean, you know, we've disagreed. We've agreed. You know, it is what it is. I have my point of view. You know, we all have our opinions. We all have our, our upbringing, our, our experiences in life. Everything we do, everything we, 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 where we are today came because of our life experiences. And every one of our experiences are different. That's the beauty of this process. That's the beauty of the democratic process where you have on our county council, you have seven different people. But you got to be able to work together and get over the disagreements. And, you know, once, once the vote's on a table, it's done. Move on. You don't have to beg. You qualify for I ain't begging. You know what? I, I, I'm telling you. Yes, honey, Chief Perry is recovering well. I try to get a, uh, an update today. Uh, I'll, I'll try to get something out tomorrow and post it on Facebook. Sorry. Hey, Angie. Oh, thank you guys all. My God, 623. Let me see what else we got on my list over here. I know I had some stuff over here. Um, yeah, we get, I love this, you know, again, tomorrow we're going to try the zoom platform just for a test. You guys come across that link, click on it and get on it. We'll, we'll, we'll learn together how to use it. I have not done it yet. Um, I've watched a ton of videos on how to do it, but, um, Senate bill 522 bl banning all plastics, single use plastics, no more water bottles, no more plastic straws, no more highly controversial. Um, we don't have enough time today to go into that. Save that one for next week. Because uh, I think that's going to be a very controversial topic. I'm not sure how you're going to get. Anyway, we'll, we'll deal with that at another time. Uh, let's see what we have here. Oh, just for fun. How about the guy that won $1.5 billion? Extend another hour. Ah, no. We're going to come back next week. We'll come back tomorrow on Zoom. Don't forget. Watch for my link. I'll post the link today. Tonight, um, write it down or save it, whatever. Um, and then tomorrow, same time, just click the link. You'll be right into the, the room, and and we're, we're going to have some fun. So the guy takes the cash option of $878 million. $878 million. Uh, unbelievable. Damn. We want a transparent government that can uh, operate with efficiency. Is that too much to ask? You keep raising our taxes, you would think the services would get better. Stacy Castillo Sepulveda. Aloha, Stacy. 
It's frustrating. We can all talk until we're blue in the face, but bottom line, but it feels like nothing ever happens. Road rage is out of control. They will keep passing laws that we don't want. Potholes remain unfilled. New roads not done. Taxes go up again. Only good thing this week is a little competition for a wide air. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, that's cool. You know, but you hit yeah, Zoom is good, right on Pono. Maybe you can help me out tomorrow. Jump on board and maybe you can help me out. I don't know what I'm that's gonna be fun. Just getting through that is gonna be fun. Um, yeah, Carol, you know, it's the frustration. It's the frustration, and and you know, it's it's so frustrating for me because again, 14 years in a position that you should be able to make some change, you know, in our system of government, which is called the strong mayor system. The council is legislative, the, the mayor is executive. Council cannot direct the administration to do anything. So we can send memos. We can put them on front of the camera. We can, you know, we can embarrass them. We can tell them what we want. At the end of the day, it's up to the mayor. It's up to the administration. And we went too long. Our landfill, I've said this for many years. For those of you that, that know and have followed my political career, I've said this for the last decade, over a decade, that the landfill is going to fill up before the new landfill is built. Nah, Mel, you nah, relax. Mark my word. The landfill in Kekaha is going to fill up before we have a new landfill. And then let's see what happens. Another I told you so moment. Remind everyone who signed in late to catch up on your... Oh, thank you, honey. I do have a YouTube channel. <coughs> Mel Raposo is the name of the channel. You can go there at any time. It takes me a while to download this, upload it, but you can see all of our weekly videos uh, on my YouTube page. Please go and subscribe, like it and subscribe so you'll get notices every time we, we put it on. Now, the beauty, I think with Zoom, I'll be able to actually Zoom it straight to my uh, YouTube channel. So you can go to YouTube and you can watch the live. You can participate in the live. You'll actually be on the screen. You want to say something, you raise your hand, I click a button, you're going you to get the mic. That's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. I'll have some co-hosts. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have a good time. We'll have a good time. Thanks, honey, for reminding me. Um, Shane, what would I do? What would you do? I'm not sure. 870 million. He might be able to afford a rental in Point Poo. How about a state lottery? That, that was our leading with this. Um, <clears throat> you know, we, we went out of our way to try to legalize marijuana, and I know some of you agree. But, I, I mean, I think there is much less harm to the people of Hawaii with a lottery than legalizing recreational marijuana. But we didn't, we, they didn't make the cut. The marijuana did. Why? Because the lobby, the Las Vegas lobby is strong against the lottery in Hawaii, any type of gambling, because they're more concerned that the lottery would open up the doors for legalized gambling. Nobody gives a rat's ass about legalizing marijuana. So Patsy's yelling, watch my mouth. Sorry, sorry, especially women and children. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think the lottery – Probably less harmful to the people, uh, but not even they didn't even get the they didn't get a hearing. That thing is dead, dead, dead. Hoku Smith, Raja Daja, aloha, you guys. Awesome, awesome. Siding and building a new landfill. Yeah, you know it's uh, they got Kapaya sided. We're far from even starting. We got about seven years left at Kekaha. If the lateral expansion doesn't go through, we are doo doo. We are in deep. Do, do. Again, another I told you so moment. There's been a few. There's been a lot, actually. I don't say that to brag. I just say that because we got people that do not listen. There's a lottery in New Mexico, and the funds are earned through the lottery towards education. So if you graduate from a New Mexico high school, you can go to, I, you know, I met some, a lot of people from New Mexico, a lot of people, uh, good friends from New Mexico, and their kids all going to state college for free. All going to state college based because of the lottery. So, uh huh. We could do that here. No, no. We rather go fight about marijuana. Yeah, we, we remember mental health. You know, again, we got to change the way we do things. And the way we do that is we get people to do what we want in office or get rid of them and put someone else. Put someone else. Because things aren't going to change if we do things the same way. We all know that old cliche. So anyway, thank you all, guys. It's 5 at 6.30. Um, man, I could do this all night long, but 
I actually got to go take a nap. I got to work tonight at 10 o'clock. Tomorrow, again, I'm going to post the link right after this, right, right after I end this session. I'm going to post the link to our Zoom uh, trial session tomorrow. Please join us if you can. Leave, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll have fun doing it. Pono, if you can make it, I would love to have you be my coach. Um, YouTube channel, Mel Raposo. Get over there and you can watch. It's fun. This stuff is fun. You guys make this fun. But yet, the other side of this is that we got to make a difference. So the information I gather from you, you know, we make sure it gets to the right people. And there's, trust me, there's a lot of people on this Facebook Live tonight and others that will come and watch down next week that are the people that make decisions. They don't like what I got to say, but they got to hear it. They need to hear it. And every time I say something and all those hearts and thumbs up go on the screen, it sends a message to these people that they better start listening or they're going to be out of a job. That's not my focus here. It's not my job. My motivation isn't to get everybody out. My motivation with this Facebook Live is to get the message to the decision makers so they make the right decisions that's in the best interest of us and no one else. Love you guys. God bless. We'll see you guys next week. Oh, tomorrow on Zoom. I'll send the link up right after this. If not, if you can't make it tomorrow, we'll see you next week, Wednesday, 5.30, Facebook Live with Mel Raposo. Hello, God bless. Love you guys.